Let's talk about the injury reports first. I feel like I'm probably a good source for you to understand everyone that's injured in Utah, and you're probably a good source for me to understand everyone that's injured in Oregon. You want to go ahead and start us off? Who who will we not see that it's an important player for Oregon? Yeah, I think the number one guy is Noah Whittington. Backup running back is out for the year. Instead, it'll be Jordan James, who's been outstanding. He and Bucky Irving both. 88 PFF grade. Jeez, yeah, he, he and Bucky Irving are two <laughs> of the 20. I think two. I think they're both inside the top 15 uh, of the highest graded PFF running backs this season. Uh, they're both around seven to eight yards a carry on the year. Like last year, they both ran for 100 yards against Washington State. Um, like they, they are crazy talented, explosive offensive line is solid, but the backs have got just the whole package of physical downhill runners who have lateral movement, especially Bucky Bucky side to side. He's, man, I don't think we've seen a guy with his maker make a guy miss ability since probably Michael James. And I'm, I feel pretty confident saying that, um, he's just so, so very hard to tackle, but, you know, defensively, the places to look for the ducks are at the cornerback position, you know, Kyrie Jackson, didn't play last week. That's Oregon's number one corner. And Jaleel Florence only played in the second half. We're not really sure if that's injury related. I know you guys are familiar with this too. Our coach doesn't give a lot about injuries and just kind of says whatever he wants to, not what we would perhaps like to know. And he will tell us whatever he feels he would like us to know to best benefit the program. So that's just kind of the way it is. And we don't know for sure, but Kyrie Jackson has got to be able to play for Oregon's pass defense to be at its best. I think that was pretty clear. You know, Cam Ward threw for more yards at Autzen Stadium than Michael Penix did in Seattle. Kyrie Jackson played at Washington. Kyrie Jackson does not play against Washington State. It, it, it certainly makes a, a difference. I think the backups did, you know, pretty solid. And Cam Ward just makes, made some big plays. But I, I think that, you know, our – Injury list right now just pales in comparison to what you guys have got going over there. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't get what's happening, man. Like, it, it, I think it's like turnovers. There's an element of randomness to turnovers. I tried to tell this to USC fans last year on Locked On Pac-12. They didn't want to hear it. And then, you know, the truth came to pass, which was, hey, you guys are forcing turnovers at a rate of like three to five per game. Yeah, that can't last. Like yeah. you're not going to do that. Oh, man, you're just hating. Steve, yeah. that's great. And then I'm like, I'm telling you, someone's going to protect the football and they're going to go for a lot of yards. And then Utah turned it over <laughs> once Utah. and went up, went for 43 points. Yeah. And I don't think you guys – did you guys turn it over in the Pac-12 championship game? Dude, I don't, I don't even remember. I mean, that game got one side. It was weird. They got off to a hot start, and then it got yeah. one sided really quick. Yeah, I think it did, we might have turned it over early. Yeah, but, but there was no, that, definitely yeah. no more than one, and they went yeah. for over forty points. So, uh, yeah, you know, turnovers are kind of random. They're they ebb and they flow. Injuries are like that too. Or Oregon overall is really healthy. I mean, no Noah Whittington. Nobody's hundred percent healthy right now, but. All the receivers, all their tight ends. They've got two great running backs. Their defensive line is healthy. They just got Justin Jacobs back, a linebacker who I think is an impact player off of injury. He played for the first time last week and looked good. Secondary, if Kyrie Jackson plays, is healthy. Like Injuries are, are pretty minimal for the Ducks. I think that's a big advantage for Oregon going into this game. Now, for sure, it definitely is. One thing that's been great if you're a Utah fan, and I think a lot of the fans watching can probably agree with me, is it's almost just been like – um, you stop caring a little bit. I know that sounds weird, but it's like you're dealing with so many injuries. You, you almost have it. this unbridled belief in your depth. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just like, yeah, it just keeps happening. We'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. Keep yeah. Just, along, I, what, you know what? Just whatever. Just get, get, get them all injured. Why not? You know what? <laughs> yeah. Let's find somebody in uh, as a civics major and put him in at left corner. Why not? Just, screw it. Just yeah, build, we'll, we'll figure O'Reilly something style. out, dude. We'll, we'll get someone from the soccer team. Yeah, All right, yeah. let's let's go down the list here. So the obvious ones, we have Brant Keithy and Cam Rising. They're medically redshirting. That was confirmed last week. You will not see them. And if you guys are Oregon fans that aren't super familiar, I'd be shocked if you don't know who Cam Rising is, but there's probably a chance you don't know who Brant Keithy is. Um I don't Frank think Keithy's. not. No, I think just forgot. I think some yeah, Oregon fans yeah, might have forgot forgotten. about this guy. Yeah. One of the best tight ends in college football, dude. Absolutely. This guy is a superstar, big time playmaker. Um, 
sad to see him out, uh, but we haven't had either one of those two all year, so it's not like you were banking on the being in. A big hit for us is Thomas Yasmin. He's out for the season two. He was our tight end behind Brent Keithy, and he's out as well. Really rough go there. We've also got um, Micah Pittman. He was a transfer, you know, he from Oregon, yeah, right? We he, know. Little underwhelming in the small sample size he played. So I wouldn't say he's a huge deal to be out. But we do have some big ones. Chris Curry looked really good in small samples last year. Got injured again last year out for the season. He's a running back. He's out. Uh, Logan Fano, if you guys were watching Utah early, early in the year, you know, we'll probably bring him up later. Jonah Ellis is an animal. But opposite Jonah Ellis was Logan Fano, who looked, amazing dude he was a freshman coming off an injury transferred over from BYU and looked like a straight stud dude it was sad to see this kid go down uh so Logan Fano's out for the year as well um Brandon Rose our backup quarterback I mean Bryson's the backup now but Brandon Rose was he does seem to be back uh but the other huge injury for us is Makai Bernard he is out for the season so Tons of injuries. You know, that's been the story with Utah. It's sad. So starting got- quarterback, yeah. number two running back, <laughs> two starting tight ends, a wide receiver, and and Fano's a defensive end. Yep. And Fano was good, dude. I don't think a lot of people were talking about him, but I think he finished the year on PFF with like a 73 and the eye test was solid it out. Yeah. He was like, he was a pretty good player, dude. That was sad. And he was just, you know, it's the worst when they get injured when they're just starting to get it. Like it's just starting to look really good. And you're yeah. like, damn it, dude. 